Hello everyone, I am Rohit and uh, today we are going to discuss about uh, how to build a service health dashboard using Shinken. So, let us get back to uh, get to the straight point. So, why are we here? So, today we are going to discuss a, a tool monitoring tool which is called Shinken. It is a tool uh, uh, how many of you, have, of you have, have heard about something called Nagios? Yeah, that is good. So, it is a tool rewritten on in Python. It is it's like uh, mostly compatible with all the Nagios plugins and gives you some more features and it is written in Python. So, th these are some of the topics like uh, we are dis going to discuss about the architecture or how to write uh, nrp plugin nrp is nagios remote plugin executor which is like uh, for checking the status of anything any monitoring metrics uh, you execute this plugin and the result is sent back to the shinken ui uh, which displays you the information and alerts you based on some rules uh, there are a lot of things and uh, how to write automated service checks and over here I mean service not uh, system matrices like uh, this I, disk IO or say if a process is running or not. So, we are going to modify uh, we are going to use a <coughs> server monitoring tool to do service monitoring. Let us get, uh, get to the next slide. So, what is Shinken? Uh, it is like uh, Nagios rewritten in Python. It is 100 percent compatible with most of the Nagios plugins, has a UI uh, based, based on some API, life status API, and it provides you functionality based like uh, alerting you on some specific rules. So, there may be a DevOps team serving a customer, uh, serving a set of customers and there may be some people on call duty like on call. <coughs> so, it may be like uh, they have three shifts. So, if something some alert uh, comes in the morning, uh, a set of people the person who is in all call may get the email plus respective say call, call alerts, SMS alerts and this can be um, configured for respective person on duty. So, if you have I, I want the talk to be very interactive, if you have uh, any doubts please interrupt me otherwise I am assuming that you are getting everything. right? So, let us discuss something about the Shinken architecture. So, here it is like uh, mm, it is a bunch of modules running as independent services and they all communicate uh, with each other using some common data store like uh, they, uh, they also use MongoDB and uh, yeah, all the data, most of the data is stored in MongoDB. So, the first thing is like when you are using Shinken, you will notice you, you will be mostly using the web UI, web interface. This web interface is based on the API which is called Live Status API. So, if you do not like one version of the web UI, you can you can also replace with uh, there, there are three, four different UI which you can use as per your needs. Can we roll our own? Sorry? Can we roll our own? Uh, Definitely you can write your own, but uh, I tried this live status API once myself. It was very low level. So, uh, I think if it if you are really going to uh, if you do not want to maintain it or if it is that important to you, very critical then only you should write that. <laughs> So, uh, then comes like the arbitrary. So, arbitrary um, when you are configuring 
all your uh, the shinken as per your needs like the servers the services and uh, maybe interdependency uh, the contacts plus how what command should it trigger it verifies all the shinken configurations and uh, <coughs> loads it into the memory and it will uh, it the arbiter will fail to uh, fail if you if any of your configuration is invalid like it it validates all your configuration and then it uh, configures other parts of the shinken like scheduler and reactioner how they should uh, it configures the other modules of shinken so that they can act on their own uh, is it clear yeah so the next thing is scheduler 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 are the is the component which schedules all your checks like if you are running a ch uh, check after say every 1 minute at the interval of 1 minute when the first check happens it will schedule that the next check should happen after 1 minute or when you modify the uh, modify the frequency in say arbiter in your configuration files and just restart arbiter you don't have to restart the whole shinken so uh, the arbiter will set uh, will notify the scheduler that the interval is say 5 minutes so once the next check happens it will uh, it will uh, schedule the next check to happen after 5 minutes instead of the next minute okay so then comes uh, polar polar is the most important thing because it actually polls the servers for its status updates so it will be polling for a server for say if i am running a database server which is say postgres it can poll to check the health of postgres if it is running if the connections are good if you are uh, if the io levels are normal not too crit uh, too high it can do all those service checks using using something called nrp or Uh, there are two modes so this is the part which is installed on the on a central shinken server and the, you have a set of a set of your servers which you want to monitor <coughs> so this server can can check all your uh, this uh, uh, all your infrastructure by polling each server and the services uh you can uh, so to check the service in all, in all your servers you need to have something called um, an rp installed uh, which is like a agent it will accept all the request and uh, run run the respective plugin to for status update the health update and returns the data back to the central server so you are managing you are managing the monitoring the whole uh, infrastructure of your company from single place instead of uh, checking the servers individually so a pool a pool of that reactioner can help you uh, trigger events like for example um, some check may fail um, due to network io or due to some uh, something which is not part of your application but uh, you may not want to trigger a, a alert immediately you may uh, say the checks uh, one of the check flap uh, one of the check fails in 1000 checks you don't want to be alerted for that single failure you want to be alerted if the checks are failing consecutively so you can configure in shinken like uh, say for check a if the if 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 the check fails five consecutive times alert me and if it is continuously failing alert me again after this interval or you can also configure it to alert you every time uh, you can set all these parameters so reactional reactioner does the all the alerting job plus you can also configure shinken to recover automatically by using some events say a process crashes in one of your server and you want to you want auto restart to be enabled 
using Shinken. Shinken can have something called as event handler, which can which will be again a NRP call to your server and uh, you can restart the service accordingly. Uh, you have any uh, doubts? Uh, how, do you, how do you test that your Shinken system actually works about bringing down the server? Yeah, you can actually stop some of your services and Shinken will automatically restart the service if you have configured auto restart. Uh, you can also have something like, uh, uh, well, this is not uh, provided inbuilt. Like, uh, if you want all uh, to capture all the events, you can write the command in such a way that it emails you or notifies you in some way okay. that it tr uh, this event was triggered. And definitely, you can always check the logs, but that will be like digging into a lot of things. Right. right? And brokers are like a uh, layer to access all your data, all the data store of Shingen. So, over here, the main part is polar. So, if if you're man managing say five servers for your company, or for your needs. Uh, a single Shinken server is good enough. But if you want to manage, say, 10,000 servers, uh, you, need to, you, you need to scale your Shinken server. That is, you cannot just add more RAM, more, more computing power to a single box. You, you can actually distribute Shinken into multiple servers to do horizontal scaling. And Polis will be the uh, will be the right th uh, right thing to be. Uh, Polis can be distributed into multiple servers, so that like uh, server A, B, C, if they are just polling your your servers for status updates, and it can send to say one of the master server, which has the UI, and these A, B, C can just keep on polling, and schedulers will automatically. Schedule all the checks and divide it in, in all your uh, all your polars. Is that clear? So you okay? So for more servers, it's better to have a master master server and a few of the slave something slave to actually handle the uh, uh, monitoring itself. Yeah. So slave will actually do the checks. Okay. Then they send it back to the master. And send to the master, and master has all the data like. Uh, the database and um, the web UI. Okay. So you are actually dividing uh, the load from master into multiple server. Polis consume the most of the mo uh, most of the resources because every check which you poll is uh, is actually a system call and in and creates a new process and this runs for a uh, for a while and sends back the result to. Shinken scheduler, which again uh, remaps. But the Dungeons did that as well. Uh, so far, this Dungeons is pretty cool when we handle. Okay, we have. Okay, we don't have thousand servers. We have hundreds. Yeah. But it doesn't. It. Yeah, it doesn't have any performance issue at all. I mean, that's our observation. But in two hundred, it's not exactly thousand. So. Yeah, Nagios is written in C. C. Uh, it will have uh, more capacity. Um, to run, uh, to do more checks in uh, in a single server, yep. but this is written in Python, so it it is slower than Nagios, okay. but again it uh, provides it is like uh, Nagios was written way back, okay. and this is like a kind of uh, restructured and <coughs> it has some more features or so you, you uh, it and it is also in under active development. So uh, that's the reason we uh, we tried out a new technology. Okay. So uh, we already discussed uh, NRP, but what is NRP plugins? NRP is uh, NRP plugins can it can be just said in simple words a script, a script which does a simple check and returns you the status. For example, if you want to ch uh, do a simple ping check to, uh, to check the network availability of your server, 
uh, you can just run the ping command and get the result back. So, uh, it also has a very large community like uh, you, you can get for server monitoring at least you can get almost uh, everything you require f uh, to monitor the services and uh, the servers. For so for example, check ping can just mo uh, ping your server with say two or three whatever packets you have configured and return you the result and uh, it can say this is this was the latency this was uh, if if the packet was uh, lost it will raise a critical alert and do all those things so it's basically a single script or it can be a bunch of script but it's better to have just a single script so how to write your own nrp plugin so the script has a simple funder if the exist status of the script is zero the, uh, the check succeeded if it is one the check succeeded with some few warnings like for example if you are if if you want to check if uh, my uh, if you are doing a simple ping check for example and the latency is say more than one second you may it may not be critical but you want to raise a warning that the latency has increased and if it is more than say 5 seconds you just uh, say critical alert something has to, needs to be changed and if it is less than 1 second you say all good nothing uh, it's our infrastructure is good so basically you need to define these three exist le levels and anything uh, which is any other value like 3 4 100 255 whatever be the exist status everything else is considered as unknown unknown status like for some, uh, like if some exception occurs the ex exist status may be one normally so it will raise a warning if it is uh, if some of the shell script crashes if some command in the shell script crashes and it has a exist status of say 55 shinken will show that as unknown in in its ui So, can, sorry, can, can you uh, say define these unknown uh, uh, numbers to, to reflect a certain error status in Shinken? Uh, few commands in Shinken have like a few NRP plugins have the option of saying if the exist status in, is unknown, don't display it as unknown, make it critical. So it falls under a, a, a bin <coughs> that says critical. Under a yeah. table that says critical. Yeah. So for example, uh, ping check or the command, uh, the actual command is say I think check ping, check underscore ping. It has an option called minus u as far as I remember. If you are passing that as uh, as parameter, it and the server is not reachable, it will say unknown. And if you don't pass this minus u parameter. Uh, I'm miss I'm missing something. Sorry, check NRP. Uh, check NRP is the plugin name. So, check NRP is not actually a network reachability test. It is checking this. Uh, it is like executing something on the remote server and uh, returning back the result using NRP module. So, if the network is if the server is uh, not reachable, it will display the status as unknown. If you Pass. If you don't pass the option as minus u, it will display it as critical. So, so yeah, yeah, that's it. Okay, so it's essentially uh, not just plugin. Yeah, plugin needs to handle that. Uh, no, I mean, okay, so essentially not just plugin will work. Existing not just plugin will work. Yeah, existing all Nagios plugins will work. Okay, so because it's a essentially not just plugin, so you can write it in any language you can imagine. Yes. As long as uh, pass it these four error codes. Uh, right. Three is essentially three. The fourth one is unknown, which you should avoid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean critical warning, okay and unknown. Unknown which we don't really use anyway, but sometimes they use case for it, but yeah. because you pass the message 
will pass a message from you, but just plug in to, to show what is the unknown error for the first place, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. So, uh, that answers your question. So, uh, that's it. But uh, if you want, like, uh, to trap all the unknown alerts, if uh, you can configure it in the templates or the as in the reactioner to alert you for unknown events as well. So it's just a event. You can subscribe to that event uh, to uh, for getting all the email alerts or SMS alerts, whatever you configure. So except OK, which is success status, you can you can uh, get the status update or you can get notified for all al al other events uh, status. So here is a very basic example of writing uh, an RP uh, plugin using Python. So if um, this is a URL test. So you want to do a HTTP request on a web server and um, say the status is OK if you are able to reach that server. For example, over here I have taken plevo.com. If um, the server is unreachable, you want to say, you want to raise a critical alert. And if the, uh, you can also configure it for latency, like if the latency is more than one second, you, you are raising a warning alert. And over here we are not handling the unknown scenario. Unknown scenario, um, it's better to have it something like you're passing some command line parameters to your script. And if the, those command line parameters are not good, like if they're invalid, it's better to pass unknown uh, because you have actually not done your test. Because the values uh, the script was accept, uh, expecting is incorrect. So if you're doing those validations, um, it's better to raise unknown as the exit status. So over here, uh, I've just declared four variables, ht, ok for, uh, for success, warning, critical, and ok. I did a mistake over there. That is ht underscore, should be ht underscore uk for unknown. Okay, there's a small typo. So uh, this was a practice I found in most of the shell scripts uh, written in uh, in in some of the shell script by the Nagios community. So I've I just took it uh, in the Python module as well. So URL is playvo.com and you are using a simp uh, very simple request module to do the service check. So you are doing, you are calculating the start time and checking the response, request.get URL, timeout equals to two second and the end time. If there is an exception, you raise a critical alert. Uh, you raise, you exit the script uh, using critical status, htcr. So if, if the URL is not reachable or the server is returning um, some, um, some exception, or th this request module uh, raises some exception, your uh, Shinken status will say critical, the uh, exception occurred while fetching the URL, the URL. Is this clear? Cool. Now, second thing is like latency. You want to, you may want to check latency. If it is more than, uh, say, one second. Okay. First is uh, status code. Uh, the server may be responding, but it may have say four not four or five not five hundred errors. So you, you may want to check if the status code written is in the 200 range, 200, 201, 202, as per your website or the API call, this can differ. I've just taken a general area of area in the 200 mark, 200 values. So if it is not in that range, you're saying the status code is invalid or Critical status code found is this for the URL I have tested this one. So this one more point to remember that all the Shinken 
uh, return values should should be of one line because the ui is uh, ui can get very cluttered if you are passing more than one one line they have a restriction that all the check values uh, they will all, they, they will only display the last line or just one line and it should be a sys.exit every time you need to exit something right I'm sorry. I mean, you should always cease the exit to, uh, when you want to pass something out when the program ends or whatnot. Yeah, like you can. So basically, it will invoke, uh, yeah. um, spawn a new process, and run it uh, with the Python interpreter. Uh, what I mean is, your script should always cease the exit when you exit your code to return the code for. Well, for exactly like uh, it may depend on your check. Yeah, yeah, but you should you still need to yeah. exit. Yeah, you need to exit using syslog, sys.exit. Yeah, to return code. Okay. Yeah, but uh, th writing this sys.exit may not be suitable for you always. Okay. For example, like um, if you are, if if the check which you are writing requires some lock. Okay. Say, a parallel execution of this script two times may result in failure of the script. So you may want to have a locking mechanism in the script. And in that case, you may want to remo remove a lock file or do some cleanup before, ex before, saying this, uh, before returning the result of this script. Okay. So writing, uh, say, remove the temporary file or remo uh, clear the lock in whatever fashion you have implemented every time it's not a good idea. So you will be like, it's it's better to have a function in which you are, you are passing the message to be to be printed with the exit status and whatever cleanup you want to do or tear down you want to do, do it over here, over there, and just you just call that function over here. Okay. <laughs> so things to consider like uh, do not re reinvent the wheel. So, for example, the uh, the uh, the NRP plugin which I showed you is like reinventing the wheel. There are always uh, the this is a very basic check. You, uh, I think the uh, you can get a NRP plugin called Check HTTP which can do the same job. So, exit values you should always consider uh, the, the exit value and work on it. Like uh, all the exceptions sh should be handled. And there are a lot of things to be taken care of, uh, depending on your check. Set up and tear down, like I said, for the log files, or if you want to track the status. Say if it is a long running task, you may want the skip to return um, return the value from the f for the last check and uh, execute the current check in background, or uh, initiate the check in some server. Uh, whatever you want to do, there can be some setup and tear down phase. So it's better to have uh, to consider those as well. Otherwise, the NRP uh, may uh, check may time out, and it will show as unknown in your uh, Shinken web server. Logs, again, I said like some if your if your check is uh, requires to run independently, it should have a lock. Exceptions you should always handle. Logging you should always do. And be verbose, but you have a single line. Like for example, you, can, you could have just said exception occurred. Uh, well, for this check, but it's better to have like some more details, like the URL you are checking or wha uh, uh, what was the exception. Uh, because uh, this is if if you are a service platform or if you if you have a platform, these checks will come handy. The uh, the written codes of of these checks will come handy while debugging the uh, real time issue. And you can graph everything using RRT, RRD tool. Um, uh, uh, the graph, graphite is a good example for graphing all your all your DA values. But if you are writing your own Shinken checks, it it also needs to uh, the exist status or the the message you are returning should also have those matrices. The uh, there's a pipe operator after which you can define the matrices. Like uh, this was the latency, for example. Um, integrate your plugins. So there, uh, as I said, it's basically do running a script. 
uh, the Shingen server will execute a script which can call again call some other script or um, call another server for the exist status. So, uh, a typical installation may have user local shinken etc as the configuration dir. The, the files which, uh, which you want to have, have a look at is like resource.cfg, commands, contact. So, in resource, you can declare some global variables and you can use it anywhere. So, for example, over here I have taken the Python virtual environment location as the glo as a global variable because I may be using it in multiple checks. Uh, plugins dir if if you are keeping all your plugins in a single directory. A commands dot uh, cfg has all the commands declared. So, mm, so for example, the in the script which we wrote two slides back was like my web check or my version of the website check. You can have like uh, command command name and command line. You will be executing the Python virtual environment Python and your script. Uh, Contacts.cfg. This has all your contacts, and uh, you can define rules based on the, these contacts to alert uh, you based on timings or uh, however you want to set. And templates.cfg. You should use this to avoid cluttering your configurations. Um, all the service checks and host checks are a bunch of configuration file in the form of uh, .cfg file. So, and every service and host, uh, uh, host check can have a lot of values. So, if you want to have a generalized template, uh, if you have a generalized template, it can make your configurations very clean. And if you want to use Python, please install the Pyro module in your virtual environment. What is the module? So, uh, this will enable Shinken to uh, run your Shin uh, Python test. Okay. Otherwise, it may not run, it will not run. Remote objects, right? Sorry? Python remote objects. Uh, okay, thanks. I think. Uh, again, some good uh, practices. So, for example, uh, the script which we wrote uh, three slides back or something can be an implementation of a website called uh, Pingdom, if you have heard about it. It does, simp uh, it does check if your web server is running. So, you can, if you want to bring that in house, uh, it is like a service, the web hosting is a service. You, uh, Clevo as a platform has different services like SMS, calls, conferences, <coughs> IVR, the lot of things. Uh, you can automate these, these services as well in your Shinken script and monitor if your services are up from the user point of view, user's, user's perspective. Some of the things are like, um, uh, some of the good practices which uh, we have noticed is like, don't try to uh, plug in just for the success scenario. It uh, may work fine. Uh, in initially, but when things go wrong, uh, you you will have no clue of what went wrong, or the service check may say timeout, or it may say still say okay. So you need to be careful about um, the failure scenarios more than the success scenario. Again, like the check should be automatic. Like for example, for writing a check to test call. It may uh, say inbound call. You want to receive a call and check if you are you were able to receive a call. So for this case, you need uh, the call needs to originate from from somewhere as well, right? So if your check is dependent on the outbound call to receive an inbound call, you should not uh, use the same platform to originate uh, to initiate the outbound call. So if the outbound call fails your inbound check will also fail. So, the check should be atomic. It should not depend on other checks or it should have minimum, uh, it should be very simple. Third is like avoid mutual dependency, which I already told you. Stats collection, you can, al you can always have uh, uh, 
graphite for logging your stats and uh, if you want something uh, more suitable for you if, the, if graphite doesn't work for you you can store all the data in some form of data store like redis or database whatever you want to you know, for all your custom checks and avoid mini hops like uh, for example the uh, the the website check which we did can log into a server using an rp and do a ch service check to that url instead of using this uh, three uh, two hop operation you can directly call from the shinken itself from the shinken main server master server or one of the polar so uh, you should always uh, you should avoid hops and tricky for long running test is because like um, uh, like for example you want to test recording uh, until and unless you have recorded the a uh, call for a considerable amount of time say say 5 minutes you are not sure if recordings are working properly and, uh, and so uh, it can be a bit tricky that you may have to run all your task in a, a synchronous fashion Shin all the shinken test are syn synchronous so you need to rearchitect uh, your design for writing those test it may have some more dependency like a uh, server or or a uh, data store so it can be a bit tricky and be 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 verbose but you have just one line when you say one line you mean character limit or you just mean i just mean one line character uh, this uh, i have not seen any character limit as long as lines you like just that sorry it's as a, a line as long as you like well um yeah w will it cut on the cut the line off at some point or is it just so long that you can you can't see it yeah once we get to 256 characters yeah. it's just going to lock it is that the log the line goes so but i mean most logs are only going to go to so many characters wide if it is not this heavy in the scroll to the right well i have seen a, a long line which can be like something around 500 characters or something i don't remember exactly the ui will definitely not be intuitive for you when you are viewing a long line because it has a very small section to display the status message again if you are configuring that line to be sent as notification to you when uh, something some exception occurs or some check fails like it 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 will be very useful yeah like in an email yeah like in an email or if you are playing that message by calling you uh that can also be that that may also help you because in the call you may want to uh, know more details and then get into a system if you are on a vacation or something whatever but uh, frankly speaking i have not uh, s dealt with a very high line a, a very large number of characters in a line so um that is still untested you can't format it it's just here it may not uh, be intuitive when in, when you are using the web ui but if you are sending it as notification it it will be useful more start you get the harder it is to yeah. notification platform so basically um, this is the last, last slide so you can have a user interface for your service health dashboard but uh, using the live status api is uh, is not going to work because you will have to do a lot of uh, uh, you will have to rewrite a lot of stuff if you are writing all your checks in a way like uh, you can pass some hooks say you are you are writing a health dashboard just like a web server and you expose some apis to send you status updates like uh, the service failed through notification or or if you want to send every other update you can send that using some pl uh, plugins like the status for okay will be tricky you have to pull it yourself but for um, uh, negative test cases you can always configure shinken to pass it as a notification 
and you can build your uh, uh, nice UI on top of that API. Uh, any questions? I, I guess I was not very clear. So the notification is for warning, critical, and unknown, not for OK. So the to topic was like uh, build service health dashboard. Yeah. So it may have like, are your APIs working? Are your SMS working? Are your calls working? Recordings. So if if you want to have the those things as automated service checks, the backend being Shinken to do all to perform all those checks, you you may want to send the, the updates to your web UI, right? Okay. So. The Shinken does provide a UI, but it is like a very big. Uh, it's good to be in for internal purpose. For customer facing service health dashboard, yeah. you should have something like uh, the API which accepts all the request okay. and uh, displays it in whatever fashion you want to display. Okay. okay? Can Shinken be used for monitoring SQL service? Yeah. Uh, how about, uh, so can it be used as a continuous integration tool? Uh, it's not good for continuous integration because these are something like uh, if you are a platform as a service and uh, you are very critical to your customer, like uh, for us, we are an infrastructure company. Uh, 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 other companies build their telephony applications on top of us. If we go down, they go down. So uh, we cannot be. Uh, we have. We need to be up for most of our time so that um, our customers are happy. So it makes sense for those kind of applications or the hosted service. If you are, ha if you have a software which you are di uh, distributing via, say, CD or uh, internet download, you don't need to do. Uh, you don't need Shinken for that. Like uh, after uh, we deploy, uh, if I want to check whether uh, the SQL, uh, uh, SQL tables are indexed, can we can we have? Uh, because before indexing, we may need to check the space. Or after after indexing has been done, the space. So can it can those uh, test cases or the checks can be tr uh, triggered manually? Manually in from the web UI, definitely you can yeah. trigger the yeah. checks. Yeah, oh, okay. right. Uh, but to answer your question, uh, you may want to have a look at uh, some of the Nagios plugins. Like for example, I've seen uh, for Postgres, there's a plugin called checkpostgres.pl. Uh, it's a Perl, uh, Perl library, I guess. So uh, it can do a lot of checks. Like for example, vacuum check if uh, if we uh, what is the duration remaining to do the next vacuum, auto vacuum. You may want to reuse those code, but it is not good, uh, not a good idea to in, in, to have them as a build server uh, to to use Shinken as a build server. Uh, when you talk about API, uh, are you talking about REST, XMRPs, or Python? I didn't get you. When you talk, when you talk about the API, what kind of API for of Shinken? Hmm. What kind of API are you talking about? Are you talking about RESTful API or was it XMRP server? So to build a service health dashboard, yeah. uh, the APIs will be in implemented by you. I mean, uh, how do we talk to that? How do we talk to Shinken to, to, to build a dashboard? Okay, so, so, so over here, yeah. So all all service checks are basically commands. No, no, I'm not talking about the check because the check is essentially is a Nagios command. I understand that. Yeah, I'm t I'm talking about the notification. Okay. So. A notification is also a command. Okay. So if you have a notification command over here, which executes some of your custom plugin, yeah. the custom plugin may accept the status of the check. Okay. 
and it may accept uh, uh, the message, the exit status, whatever you want, uh, want, uh, want to pass it as uh, pass it to the to your API. And this check can can actually do a restful API. Uh, this check uh, this check can be uh, post to your restful API. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me clarify the question. Yeah. So all this, I'm, I'm not, I don't really care about this chat, I just, because this is talk about an API to uh, get the status on your syncamp for you to build a status dashboard. dashboard. How do the, your own uh, dashboard talk to Shinken to get the statuses? What kind of API do they use to talk to Shinken to get the status? There's no API. You can use... So basically, what, what is the API thing that exposes to? Yeah, because the we're talking about uh, API-based user interface. Right. So what API do they talk about? Are you talking about REST or what not? What? So I'm talking about you need to build your own API to post status update to your dashboard. Uh, Shinken does provide live status API. If uh, you really want to do that, uh, you can definitely, uh, you can get all the service health, health from the live status API. Okay. Uh, using which the dashboard was built. Uh, it's kind of low level, but uh, if you if you are able to uh, use that, it's good. You can pull Shinken for the status update from your dashboard. And the second way is like pushing to the service cell dashboard for all the service status. That is the second way. Okay, so what's that? Is that the rest or is that you, need, you can define it yourself. So all those, uh, all the API calls will be uh, will be done from your custom NRP plugin, which is like, like. Okay, so so we're talking about Nagios again, now. It's not really like Shinken itself, the front end for Shinken providing an API. Like. All right. So, okay. and again, this was like a, this is built for a service a server monitoring tool, okay. and we have tried to use it for service monitoring. The use case is different. Okay. Okay, uh, last question. We only have time for one more question. Okay, no more questions? Okay. Uh, yeah. Hi. Hey, thank you very much. Rohit. Thank you. There's a uh, token you. of appreciation. Thank, thank you. you very much.